Firstly, yes, just give us a bit more background uh, over the allegations levelled against Peter Hollingworth. Good morning, Michael. This, this is, as you said, a historic um, process that's been going on for five years since those first complaints were made. Now, these relates to not uh, allegations of abuse directly by Dr Hollingworth, but it goes to his time as Archbishop of Brisbane in the 90s. And what the concern is from complainants is that he was given evidence or there were complaints made about um, pedophile priests and teachers within the, the diocese and no action was taken um, and no action or no extra help were given to some of those victims. Um, there was a case that was sort of well um, documented in the Royal Commission where there was a letter came forward that that Arch, uh, the then Archbishop Hollingworth knew um, that there was a pedophile priest, John Elliott, who'd actually confessed to abusing two boys, but the Archbishop let him keep working um, to the end of his retirement, despite that confession. That was well detailed by the Royal Commission. But if you'd cast your mind back 20 years, these allegations came out then when Dr Hollingworth was the Governor General, and in part it led to his resignation in 2003. So what we've had five years ago is a series of um, victim survivors of abuse, of people who are concerned about this, making complaints to the Anglican Church um, Archdiocese in Melbourne, where Dr Hollingworth is, and he still holds holy orders. He's a bishop here. Um, he's, he doesn't officiate. He's, he has the right to officiate um, ceremonies, but that's very limited. But they made a complaint basically saying that he failed to act on, on these concerns back at the time, and he should be stripped of his holy orders. Okay, so what can we expect from the, the hearing process this week? Well, this is a really big question, Michael. We'd, it's it's likely to be a closed hearing. Now, this tribunal, uh, it's a group called Cura, and it's an independent body separate of the church that hears these complaints on behalf of the church. It's sort of an arm's length um, process. Now, most of their uh, inquiries into other priests, uh, other issues in the Anglican Church happened very quickly. They wrapped up in sort of 12 to 18 months. This has been going on five years. There's been multiple attempts to have this hearing with Dr Hollingworth, and they've been cancelled at the last minute. So some of the, the, the victims survivors are very sceptical that this will even happen this week. They're hoping it will. We understand it. It should happen. It will kick off this morning. It's a it's a it's it's a chance for the submissions to be heard in, in person and I guess some sort of cross-examination too. It's a very secretive process, but the, for these victim survivors, they, they really feel they need this process to happen. It's part of their um healing, if you like, part of their dealing with the trauma. They're they're still ongoing. One of the women uh who is a victim survivor, she was 14 in the 1950s when she was groomed by a priest and and she, she's still searching for what she says justice. Her, her trauma, she says, was exacerbated in 2002 when Dr Hollingworth in an Australian story essentially said that the almost basically blamed her for that um, abuse in the 1950s, said it was the other way around, it wasn't rape. Uh, and that, that was one of the other things that led to his resignation. So she's searching for justice. She's hoping to speak. Her name's Beth Heinrich. She's hoping to speak to the, um, the hearing this week and have, and have her moment.